President Brower, members of the Board of Trustees, university faculty, graduates, families, and friends. As Chief Academic Marshal, it is my great honor to proclaim the opening of the Graduate Commencement Convocation for 2011. Please remain standing for the welcome and invocation. Thank you, Dr. Crow. I must tell you, you look mighty good from up here. Congratulations. Well, it's my privilege on behalf of the Board of Trustees, the university faculty and staff of Point Loma Nazarene University to welcome the graduate class of 2011 and to welcome all of your family and friends to this memorable and wonderful occasion. Graduate candidates, this day marks another significant step in your life your goals, and your profession. This university community welcomes you to this grand and historic setting, which symbolizes our commitment to teach and shape, and now, in just a few moments, to send you more effectively prepared to be an influence for good in your life, your work, your families, your community. We congratulate you and wish you the very, very best from this moment. Please know we are very proud and very privileged to have been a part of this phase of your preparation. I hope you enjoy this day. I hope you sense great celebration in your heart and with your family and friends. Congratulations and God bless you. It's my privilege now to have Anya Nazarenkov, one of our graduate students in the School of Nursing, to come and offer our invocation. Following the invocation, Professor Jerry Childs will read the university prayer from the book of John. Anya, please come. <clears throat> Gentlemen, will please remove their hats. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here on this special day. We ask for your blessing upon each one of us this morning. Diverse paths have brought us to this celebration. We are grateful for the support you have provided during our journeys at Point Loma Nazarene University. We praise you, Lord, for your love and for your faithfulness. You have blessed us with a dedicated faculty, caring friends, and loving families. Lord, open our hearts and minds to recognize your power and wisdom. Bless the speakers, faculty, graduates, and our guests. May our joy of accomplishment be to your glory. Point Loma Nazarene University has encouraged and equipped each of us to embrace learning. We ask you, Lord, to continue to shape us into the likeness of Christ, that we may be ready for service in our community and abroad. Fill us with Holy Spirit, that we might be empowered to reach out to those in need with a kind hearts and positive attitudes, that they might see your light shine through us. Help us to use our newfound skills in your service and as an expression of our faith. Our Lord, in the days to come, please, a hedge of protection, place, I'm sorry, a hedge of protection around our school and help the faculty of our university to continue to be devoted to Christ and to the transformation of future students. Father, as we begin this time of celebration, we ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving, holy. 
The university prayer is taken from the Gospel of John, a passage known to many as the High Priestly Prayer of Jesus. Its words embody beautifully the mission and purpose of Point Loma Nazarene University. I will read excerpts that capture the essence of the university's prayer for us today. This is also found in your printed program. After Jesus said this, he looked up toward heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son, that your son may glorify you. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. I will remain in, <clears throat> in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. I have given them your word and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you will take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth, your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, and that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me, and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The word of the Lord. Several years ago, we began the tradition of an address called Making the Point. What we found is that an opportunity for one who has guided, invested, worked on behalf of the educational experience of graduates can speak much more directly into this context and into this day as we celebrate together. Today I've asked our provost and chief academic officer, Dr. Carrie Fulcher, uh, to speak to this graduate convocation. Dr. Fulcher has uh, entered in as of March to a full-time appointment as provost and chief academic officer but he's been at the university since 1994. Uh, he's a biologist, a gifted and skilled teacher. Uh, he has a PhD in zoology from the University of Idaho and has done postdoctoral work in the research triangle of North Carolina with the Institute, National Institute of Health. Dr. Fulcher is a gifted thinker and teacher has insights to the academic process and to the learning experience which I deeply value. Today as he comes to present some words around making the point at this point, I hope you will welcome him to this time and uh, reflect with him on the thoughts and words that he presents. Will you help me in welcoming Dr. Carrie Fulcher? Thank you, Dr. Brower. One of the uh, key guidelines that um, was provided to me in uh, preparation for this making the point address was to be brief. Uh, all capital letters, bold font. Dr. Brower, being a former faculty member who's going through teaching withdrawals, giving me a microphone, a platform, and a captive audience is like telling uh, a kid in a candy store just to look. 
I'll do my best. I thought I would uh, close out your experience at Point Loma by revisiting something that likely was one of the first things we talked about at Point Loma when you arrived, and that's our mission statement. I hope that your experience at Point Loma has engaged and challenged your minds. I hope that your interactions and experiences at Point Loma have helped to shape your character. But I want to close with this making the point address, looking at the notion of service becoming an expression of faith. A few years ago, I heard a faculty member respond to the question of what do we want our graduates to look like upon receiving a Point Loma education? She relayed the following story about two recent graduates that had a chance to interact with at a public setting shortly after they had graduated. One of them represented the model of all that we could hope for, and would, we would have been proud to hang around their neck, Point Loma graduate. They were kind, articulate, thoughtful, and their interactions with others were filled with grace and hospitality. The other student, while equally intelligent, came off as arrogant, self-absorbed, their interactions with others were abrasive and dogmatic. For this student, the faculty member wanted to hide the fact that they were affiliated with Point Loma in any way. The difference between these two students really centered around this third component of the mission statement, service becomes an expression of faith. One of the students got the point, and the other one didn't. Over this past spring break, I was allowed the great privilege to pretend I was a biologist again. And I joined some of the faculty and students in the biology department as they went uh, on a trip to Costa Rica to study the neotropical ecology of the cloud rainforest. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? <laughs> it was on this trip in an early morning meditation on John chapter 13 that I wrote in my journal many of the thoughts that I'm sharing today, though at that time I didn't have any idea it would be part of a commencement address. So let me read portions of John 13 for us to consider. Starting at verse 1. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything, and that he had come from God and would return to God. So, he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that he had around him. Skipping to um, verse 12. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, Do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. In the passage, Jesus acknowledges position as teacher and Lord, and by right, he should have been the one who was being served, according to the hierarchy of the way we order things as humans. Yet he emphasized and states his position again and then says, I, Lord and teacher, have washed your feet. You are to wash each other's feet. I've always known this example uh, really had nothing to do with hygiene. But my common thought about it in this particular example has been that it was used to illustrate the point that the one with position shouldn't pull rank on those around them, but instead should subvert their rank and become the one who serves. This interpretation is not unfamiliar to us. In fact, whole books have been written on this, such as Donald Crable's Upside Down Kingdom. The story of this, uh, as it's often framed as Christians and as followers of Christ, the hierarchy of human orderings is turned on its head. And to achieve the status of blessing, we lower ourselves and lift others up. While there's some truth in this, Jesus' comments at the close of this passage don't seem to nicely fit with this idea, and I had never noticed that before until that early morning in Costa Rica. In the closing passage, Jesus says that slaves are not greater than their master, and the messenger is not greater than the one who sends the message. At first read, this seems backwards, 
based on that example. If he was flipping the hierarchy, shouldn't it have said master is not greater than the slave instead of slave is not greater than the master? Jesus switched the focus and gave us a new lens to look through. While the disciples saw Jesus as master and message giver or teacher, he knew that God was the master and the message giver, and he was the um, servant and the messenger. With the hierarchy of human orderings as the focus of the example, it looked like Jesus was turning the authority structure on its head. However, with the focus of the example on God and God's ordering of things, the message Jesus was trying to convey is that God is both master and message giver, and we are servants, and those of us who take his name are messengers of his gospel. If you've seen the movie The Matrix, you know that the Matrix was a computer simulated reality to pacify and subdue humanity. The hierarchy of human orderings is an illusion on the order of the Matrix. Humanity follows it as if it were true, but it actually masks our true reality. This is what Jesus was teaching in this example by placing himself, teacher and master from the disciples' perspective in the role of servant and messenger his true position in relationship to God. I encourage you as you move out from your time at Point Loma to keep in mind that just as this was Jesus' true position in relation to God, it's also yours. When we buy into the hierarchy of human orderings, as the disciples did and as we are prone to do, then when we get a degree, when we land a job in the workforce, or when we achieve some other form of status. The temptation will be to place ourselves in that human hierarchy with some above us and some below us. We will serve those that are above us and expect to be served by those that are below us. Jesus was teaching by example a new perspective, a God perspective, where only God is master and that clinging to the rights of authority and expectations of being served according to the human hierarchies was wrong. Jesus wasn't turning things upside down. He was expanding our perspective to show us our true position and our true reality. The important key is that our position is always in relationship to God, not in relationship to others around us, and thereby it's always that of servant. Last week, I sent out a survey to all of our graduates asking them to respond to this question. When you think of the statement, service becomes an expression of faith, what does it mean or what has it come to mean for you either currently or as you anticipate the next phase of your life? I want to thank all those students who responded to this survey. It was a great pleasure for me to read the many responses that were given, and I'm sorry that I can't share them all with you. But someone told me I had to be brief, and I probably have already failed on that part. Let me close by allowing some of your voices as graduates to help make the point of what it means for service to become an expression of faith. One of you said this, when I think of the statement service becomes an expression of faith, I'm reminded of my job as a mild, moderate special education teacher. With my job comes great joy and satisfaction as I'm given the opportunity to help educate and shape children. My job also comes with stress and frustration when my students lack motivation and are disrespectful. In moments such as these, I must remind myself that my service to them is an expression of my faith. Faith that even though I can't see it today, through my love and patience toward them, is a seed planted that will one day grow into something beautiful. This graduate emphasizes that serving is an expression of faith is something that we need to remind ourselves of because it oftentimes doesn't come naturally. A second graduate said this, it is through my faith that expression of service becomes natural and out of compassion and love. As Jesus has come to serve, so I want to follow my Lord's example. My faith drives my desire to serve and service out of my desire to please my Lord and God. Service is also a fulfillment of my faith, my purpose in life. It gives meaning to my faith when I express it through serving others. For what is the value of faith if not expressed through service? This graduate reminds us that service is not forced and it flows out of our faith.
Lastly, a third graduate said this, my faith is not something that is self-serving or self-focused, but rather others-focused. Just as Jesus commanded in Matthew 22, the, most, the two most important things are to love God and love others. Part of loving God and loving others well is my faith expressing itself through action or service, becoming an expression of faith. This graduate reminds us that the end of service is an expression of our faith is always others-focused rather than self-focused. I want to thank those graduates for helping me to make the point. And as your time at Point Loma comes to a close and you continue in your current work assignment or start new ones, may God be with you as you all express your faith in service to those that may cross your path. May God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Fulcher. Well, now we have come to what is truly a high point of this commencement convocation. And I'm going to ask our provost, Dr. Fulcher, to join me. And we will begin this very uh, significant time for our graduates. Dr. Fulcher. Mr. President, it is my privilege as the provost and chief academic officer to present to you the following candidates for their respective graduate degrees. Will the candidates for the Masters of Ministry degree please rise and remain standing? Will the candidates for the Master of Business Administration degree please rise and remain standing? Will the candidates for the Master of Arts in Teaching degree please rise and remain standing? Will the candidates for the Master of Science in Nursing degree please rise and remain standing? Will the candidates for the Master of Science degree in General Biology please rise and remain standing? Will the candidates for the Master of Arts in General Biology please rise and remain standing? Will the candidates for the Master of Arts degree in Education please rise and remain standing? <laughs> Will the candidates for the Master of Arts in Special Education please rise and remain standing? And will the candidates for the Master of Arts in Religion please rise and remain standing? Mr. President, each of these individuals has fulfilled or is scheduled to fulfill this summer all of the degree requirements. On behalf of the faculty and by their vote, I am pleased to recommend to you the conferring of their respective degrees. Before I confer degrees, the friends and families of the Master of Ministry candidates were extraordinarily quiet. <laughs> I don't want you to be left out. Friends, family, and all of us, would you congratulate Master of Ministry? <laughs> all right, here we go. Listen carefully. This is really good stuff. Now by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Point Loma Nazarene University and the State of California, it gives me great pleasure to confer upon each of you, effective upon the date of completion of your program, <laughs> the degree to which you are entitled with all of the rights and privileges and honors appertaining thereto. Congratulations.
Will the candidates for the Master of Ministry degree please remain standing and all others may be seated. All of those who are to receive the Master of Ministry degree will please be escorted to the platform and receive their hood for their appropriate degree. Members of the faculty will place a hood on each graduating student as their name is announced. Jeremy C. Bays. Michael Allen Beecham. Michael Joseph Gilson. Daniel W. Keaton. Kyle Brandon Lane. Rosita Colina Nicolabo. Marvin Glenn Pounds. George James Williamson. Let's congratulate these Master of Ministry students. Those who are to receive the Master of Business Administration degree will please be escorted to the platform one row at a time as directed by their faculty. Ivan A. Arabo. John Robert Culbertson. Graham Michael Duck. Eileen Lois Griffin. Sarah Ayala Haile. Kristen R. Hansen. Christopher M. Horner. Tricia C. 
Ingram. Lauren K. Kaplan. Bianca L. Leta. Richard C. Oldham. Bernard Rahi. Mark Anthony Richardson, Jr. Michael J. Riundo, Jr. John D. Runyon. Leon Shin. Noel Storms. Jenny Sun. Terry Allen Switz, Jr. Let's congratulate these Master of Business Administration students. Those who are to receive the Master of Arts in Teaching degree will please be escorted to the platform one row at a time as directed by their faculty. T. Bennett. <laughs> Carrie Ann Sophie Branker. <laughs> Brianne Raylene Braswell. Rosario Camacho Reyes. Rebecca Ann Burgess. Lori Beth Freed. Jenna Noel Carosa. Kaylee Ann Cherry. That's an easy one. Yes, it is. Christine M. Cole. Yes, I do. Yeah. 
Carly Jean Cosentino. Rachel Curtsy. Amy Elizabeth Duroff. Santana S. Gonzalez. Tamika Andrada Hollingsworth. <laughs> Natalie A. Jager. <laughs> Eric Joseph King. Jeannie E. Conine. <laughs> Megan Lloyd. <laughs> Cami Marie Meyer. Katrine <laughs> Murphy. Katrine Merkel. Pablo Oliveros. Brett David Pepin. Sean Elizabeth Powell. Adriana Rivas Cazeda. Andrew C. Rodriguez. I know how to say your name. Araceli Ruiz. Shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> Sarah Elizabeth Ryan. Dave Satter. Kelsey Marie Souser. Jason Aaron Whaling. Pamela Lynn White. Jason Mark Zavala. Let's congratulate these Masters of Arts in Teaching students.
Those who are to receive the Master of Science in Nursing degree will please be escorted to the platform one row at a time as directed by faculty. Jessica Winona Adams. <laughs> Jeanette Mead Apel. <laughs> Elaine J. Arguia. Elizabeth Arnett. Christine Bayer Mendoza. Annette Connolly Contosti. Mary Ann D. David. Vernell Sonia Dunkley. Sarah Abarte Acevedo. Eileen Morley Haley. Susan Mary Heinen. Lindsay Howard. Jasmine K. Angelica Madigan. Joanne D. Manahan. Sonia Marie McAllister. Brian K. McCord. Anya Nazarenkov. Leanne Marie Ship. Mary Jane Smith. Jennifer Suzanne Turney. David William Wagner. Let's congratulate these Masters of Science in Nursing students. All those who are to receive the Masters of Science degree in General Biology will be escorted to the platform as directed by their faculty.
Michelle Bakong Bon. Danielle Marine Dwyer. Julie Gallagher. Ronald Anthony Macalate. Christy Earl Porter. Let's congratulate these Masters of Science in General Biology students. Both of those who are to receive the Master of Arts in General Biology will be escorted to the platform by their faculty. Deborah A. Culley. Lisa Ann Morgan. Let's congratulate these Master of Arts in Biology students. Those who are to receive the Master of Arts degree in education will be escorted to the platform one row at a time as directed by their faculty. Kyra Michelle Atkins. <laughs> Jennifer Leanne Allen. <laughs> Debbie Gail Alvarez. Amy Elizabeth Anderson. Julie A. Ashley. Shannon Barnes. Isabella Pua Pua Na Barrett. Tanya Avon Bielstein. Jennifer Bezdek. Janine K. Boyer. Amanda Annette Bolton.
Jessica Marie Brown Glaze. Kirsten Sabalka. Wanda Faye Calhoun. Maricela Castaneda. Claire Towner Buckley. Cardenas. Miriam Cardenas. Trisha Piaratana Pipat Chun. Jeff Clark. James M. Connors, Jr. Amy Elizabeth Corbin. Jimmy Vincent Delgado. Heather Renee Easter. Abby Mountain Farricker. Veronica Ferrafino. Todd Anthony Finkbeiner. Francisco Flores. Dora G. Garza. Elia A. Gordon. Jeanette Noel Grant. Charlene Griesner. Ricky E. Harmon. Samantha Lau Hogg. Danny J. Hernandez. Byron R. Herarte. Sujana Reddy Herrera. Anthony George Hicklin. Carly Elizabeth Hilficker. Jamie Ann Hopton. Ismail Huerta.
Katrina L. Ingram. Ricardo Ashida. Rachel Ataid Jansen. Nolan E. Johnson, Jr. Ashley Jean Comerod. Holly K. Stephen James Kirsten. Dolores Redondo Kinnevong. Thank you. Amy R. Lawrence. <laughs> Sherry Lee. Linda Jo Lafine. <laughs> Holly Bryn Rebecca Lehman. <laughs> Lorena Lopez. Evelina Hurtado Marquez. Kristen Marie McGregor. James Ryan Meredith. Erica Messa. Ashley Marie Mills. Yosuke Mayoshi. Aaron Mikatuk. Helen Chimeno. Marilyn Knock Newen. <laughs> Rochelle E. Nintaman. <laughs> Lakina Kyo Ung. Dimitri Peterson. <laughs> Sylvia Petrovich. <laughs> Laura Colleen Pettit. <laughs> Jody Lee Phillips. Salvador Placencia. Yeah. <laughs> Kenneth Powell. Yeah. Martha L. Quintanilla. Yeah. Berenice Ramirez. Lane Margaret 
read. Renee Ann Ritchie. Christian Emmanuel Rivas. Arcelia Monica Rodriguez. Heather Taylor Rodriguez. Ramona M. Ross. Deborah Marie Raleigh. Emmanuel Sanchez. Aaron Nicole Shaniker. Anita Joy Schofield. Lori Michelle Shane. Jennifer Roxanne Shimon. Janice Renee Smith. Joanne M. Southard. Dawn Ray Taft. Brianne Tiboney. Delinda D. Unruh. Yvette Yerudia. Luisa Carol Valdez. <laughs> Teresa Marie Vietti Herrera. <laughs> TB Noel Wemick. Deborah R. Zoll. <laughs> Beth Helen Zadar Zadarko. Let's congratulate these Masters of Arts in Education students. All those who are to receive the Master of Arts degree in Special Education will please be escorted to the platform as directed by the faculty. Charisse A. Arosa Mena. <laughs> Brian Du Bois. <laughs> Alyssa Marie Jones.
Let's congratulate these Masters of Arts and Special Education students. All those who receive the Master of Arts degree in Religion will be escorted to the platform as directed by faculty. Matthew Zolesi Romero. <laughs> Jessica Renee Tresser. <laughs> Matthew James Jarvanen. Let's congratulate these Masters of Arts in Religion students. Now if we could have the entire class of 2011 graduate studies once again stand again and receive our congratulations. You may be seated. We'd like to invite the members who are present from the Board of Trustees, if you would stand with me and remain standing. So we express our congratulations to the class of 2011. The members of the Board of Trustees here today represent over 40 men and women including ordained elders and lay people who are elected by the 12 districts from the southwest region of the Church of the Nazarene. Now lean over to your neighbor and say, that's very interesting. <laughs> we do want to thank you for the honor of serving you during your graduate studies. We hope that Point Loma will always be an inspiring reference point as you follow God's plan for your life. We congratulate you for the distinction you have achieved this day. May you find your greatest fulfillment in life by doing things justly, being a giver of mercy, and walking humbly with God. God bless you. Congratulations. How appropriate that the sun shines on this very moment. It is our joy and tradition to have an opportunity to speak a blessing over you in this moment. As you have experienced Point Loma, I hope you know that we have given our best to teach and to shape you during these Point Loma days. And now it is time to send you from this place with our blessing. Hear this blessing for you today. Throughout all of your life, may you know and receive God's grace. May God's truth embodied in Christ resource your living. And may God's holiness fill you with love for service to others. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, both now and forever. Congratulations, and God bless you on this great day. Please stand for the singing of the university hymn. It is on page nine of your program. After the singing of the hymn, please remain standing. Congratulations today to all of our graduates, to families and friends, and all of you who have attended this wonderful occasion. In just a moment, Matthew Jarvin is coming. He is a member of the graduating class, and he will pronounce our benediction. It is our great privilege to have been a part of this journey and these moments. Uh, our prayer is that as you pass through the gates now of the university, you continue to learn to grow, to serve. Our prayer is that God would continue to bless you. Before the benediction, let me make an invitation. We have about 5,000 people who are coming for one o'clock convocation. Gather richly, celebrate wildly, and please do it quickly. <laughs> Thank you in advance for exiting the parking and providing space for one o'clock. God bless you, congratulations. Matthew, come pray. Gentlemen will please remove their hats. Pray with me. Gracious and loving God, we are a thankful people. We thank you for the precious gift of Point Loma Nazarene University. We thank you for the many people who in countless ma ways make an experience here a possibility. We thank you for the way your kingdom has become more present and visible to us through this experience. We thank you for the mentors who have shown us the richness and depth and beauty and fullness of your creation. We pause now for a moment to give thanks, each of us for the particular ways that we have experienced these blessings at PLNU.
Lord, we are truly thankful. As we leave this blessed place, we ask in Christ's name that you would go with us, and even more so that we may go with you, wherever you may lead us, to the poor, to the suffering, to the lonely, to the sick, to the outcast, to the downtrodden, even to our enemies. We ask for the courage to follow your redeeming and reconciling love as it extends both to our local neighbors and even to the ends of the earth. We pray for the courage to embrace the reality that our lives are not our own and to live out that reality without reservation. We ask for the strength to take your words and your life seriously and for lives that witness to that. We commit now to following you in all of the specific ways that you will continue to lead each of us in our lives. Lord, may we go with you. And as we do by the power of your spirit, we leave in the unity of your resurrected body as your holy and set apart people sent out to be a sacrificial blessing to the world, mirroring the faithfulness you have shown us in your son. It is in an affirmation of this way that we pray together as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Please remain standing. <laughs>